You are now entering a vibe. Boy, boy, you sharp, boy. Look at the face on you, boy. Ooh, boy, you look with swords on your head, boy. Yo, what can I say that's not already been said? I don't know. I'm goofy. I'm here. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> I love it. How's your day going so far? It's going good. It's been a press day. Um, album's coming out in a week or so. Uh, so just making the rounds, man. Excited that, you know, people are supporting it. I can talk about it. Uh, yeah, you know. Definitely. And we're about 10 years in for you to do a solo project by yourself. You were in H2O before. Um, what I wanted to take back a little bit is when you did Return of the B-Girl, you had an intro part where you listed, well, the intro song where you listed almost every female rapper, good artist out there. I feel like it was an Easter egg for this album today. Was that something you were kind of setting up for? It was like a Marvel thing. Nah, uh, that's what people, when they ask me about, you know, the concept and how I even came up with this, I tell them, like, subconsciously I've been doing it since day one, mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it's just a natural progression, and it, I think it just took some time for me to mature, mm -hmm. um, to learn more about who I am, what my purpose is. And, and with this album, like, I felt like <clears throat> I've, I figured all the little pieces out to to go into this next stage, and naturally it led me back to like go back to your root type thing. Definitely. So you know, I've always been doing that subconsciously, but it's just crazy how it plays out like that, and it just shows you like you are who you are. You know, you grow as a person, but the core of you never changes. Absolutely, and with this album being titled Eve, I noticed with the website that you have up, it's called Genesis three twenty. Is that because mm -hmm. of the Eve of the Bible? Yeah, I mean she's the She's the first uh, living mother um, that, if you go read that verse, is, you know, God named the first woman Eve. And, you know, um, <clears throat> even just learning about black women and uh, scientifically, uh, right. black women are the only women that uh, have the mitochondrial Eve gene right. where you can make every race from. So, you know, it's, it's layered. <laughs> what? Well, I can say you're very educated, that's for sure, because that's like random stuff I Google sometimes, mm -hmm. and when you said that, I was like, oh, that's a fun fact right there. Yeah, 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 I, I, that's something I even stumbled across of, even after uh, titling in that, so, yeah. yeah. For sure. And one thing I've noticed about you from your first mixtape to now, most artists, obviously, they change their cadence and they change the rhythm, they change their flow, everything about them changes. There's sort of like a... Not so much a progression, but they evolve into, I guess, to fit in today's music. But you, you've always stayed constant and consistent. How were you able to do that? Because it's very difficult. Um, I didn't want to sound like anybody else. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't know about other artists, but I never wanted to be like anybody. I think that's corny. Like, yeah. I want people to be themselves, and I want to appreciate them and champion them. But there's only one me, right. and God made me the way I am, and He gave me the gift that I have. So. I never wanted to try to change that. I only wanted to be the best me that I could be. Right. Um, and, you know, I had to, to learn how to sharpen my skills and, you know, fine tooth and, and just refine it where it could be uh, experienced or received in a certain way where people could really get it. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've always just wanted to be me. You know, it takes too much energy to, energy to try to follow trends and to to be what's hot, like you're gonna be chasing and changing yourself forever because yeah. trends change. So, the the best version that I could be is of myself, and and that's what kept me motivated to just do me. Perfect. And speaking of that, you never felt at any point that you wanted to go, hey, let me make a party hit, let me do this, because you're a soul food kind of person. When you rap, you give somebody soul food, stuff to think on, stuff to sit on. You don't feel, I guess. I don't want to say dumb when you walk away from the song, but you feel educated, you feel better about yourself, you feel uplifted when you're listening to your music. You can feel the relation between the words that you're speaking versus listening to like a quick radio hit. You never felt like you wanted to do like a radio hit at all. I never wanted to force anything. You know, I don't I don't want to go in like, oh, I need to have a radio hit. Do I make songs that can be on the radio? Yeah, I think I have, whether they were or not. So it's just go in and just do what feels right. Everything I, I do is about feeling. Um, some of them are going to be fun joints where it's, it's just like jam the girl, jam the boy. Like we just talking about going out and having a good time tonight. And, you know, some things are going to be politically uh, influenced. Some things are going to be about life. Some things are going to be about relationships. So I try to draw from every aspect of life. And that's the beautiful thing about this project. Like I wanted to show, like, 
you can't put me in a box. Like, you can't say that, oh, I'm just this one version. Like, rap, you only talk about, you know, political things and you burn incense when you go home. Like, no, <laughs> like, any and everything I do, I pull from. Um, you know, and if you really listen to the music, you'll see that I'm versatile in that way. So, yeah. you know, that's that's always been what it was for me. I just, whatever I'm feeling at the moment is what I'm going to write about. That is so true. Mm -hmm. And to talk about the lead single off of Eve, uh, I'm about to butcher her name, Ibtahaj? Ibtahaj. Ibtahaj, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I was practicing this before, but now it just all good. Out my head. I'm but. probably butchering it too, but that's <laughs> the closest I can get. <laughs> right? No, for sure. Did you guys sit down and talk about this song? Did you guys ever had the chance to sit down and say, hey, I'm naming the song after you? No, no? Um, I just went in and I did the music. Um, and, you know, I hoped after it was done that, you know, I could send it to everybody, at least reach out to them or when it, when it came out that they would hear it. Um, and I hoped that they would be proud of it. Uh, but, you know, when, when we decided that would be the single and we were going to do a video, we reached out to her, we sent her the music. We sent her the concept for the video because I wanted her to be in it. Uh, but for whatever, whatever reason, it took some time for her to get back. But um, she actually sent us an email back probably three or four days ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, just appreciating it. Uh, she posted about it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm glad it resonated with her. Like, you know, I just wanted to shine my light on her and all her accomplishments. And, right. you know, the fact that she is the first Muslim-American um, athlete to perform in a hijab and what that means for the Muslim community and about her story and, and being unwavering and confident in her walk. Like, you know, you have, she has hardships, you know, being a, a black um, American woman who's a Muslim, right. who, who's in the Olympics. And we know sometimes, you know, the narrow uh, idea of what some people think of the Muslim community. Um, you know, so, you know, it was important for me to make sure I showcase that part of black women um, on the album. Right. And I want to ask you also, how did you get Jizza and D'Angelo on the track? Because mm -hmm. one is a professor at uh, Columbia University now, mm -hmm. and I've seen him online countless times, you know, educating people on different mm -hmm. subjects in science. And D'Angelo really doesn't collab with anybody like mm -hmm. that. How was that? Like, I don't even say I was just jamming to D'Angelo not that long ago. I was like, how did she get him on track? Right. Um, okay. <laughs> um, the universe, everything happens in the time it's supposed to happen. Um, and, I, you know, you, you speak in existence what you want to happen, but you also have to be patient with the process and when it's supposed to be given to you. And the very first thing I did when I signed the ninth was I made a list. It was a long list mm -hmm. of everybody I wanted to work with. And I make that list over and over again with every project. But um, specifically for this one, Knife reached out to Jizza to get, you know, permission for us right. to even use the song and to ask him to be on it. Uh, and Jizza, you know, again, like, he doesn't get on too many joints. So I don't know. I, I guess because it, it was Liquid Swords, it is what it is. The respect he had for Knife um, that, you know, I guess he had for me too, yeah. which I'm honored to. He blessed us with it. And D'Angelo was just, you know, we got a call and, Somebody knew somebody, and they wanted to play it for him. And they said, you know, that he was a fan of mine. He was a big fan of Knives. You know, what the record Liquid Swords meant to him, um, it just inspired him so much that so he wanted to be on it. So it was just the right time and the right combination of events, the right combination of individuals. You know, uh, without that Liquid Swords sample, I probably don't, I'm, I don't work with D'Angelo. It could have been any other beat. Though he was a fan of mine, without it being Liquid Swords and him connecting to the Wu Tang and those memories, he probably is not going to get on it. So, the universe it just happened the way it happened, and you know, I'm just thankful for it. That's all I got to say, and I'm thankful for him for even taking the time out to want to be a part of it. Definitely. And with, like you said, when uh, you came up with the album, there's a history lesson. You said this in previous uh, interviews before that you want everybody to be able to. Go and do their research when they look mm -hmm. at each person that you name the songs after. What is something besides that that you want people to take away from the album? Um, just one, to, to love women and respect women, to listen to women, to appreciate all women. That, you know, we don't have to divide and we don't have to talk down on women that, you know, for whatever they do, uh, whether you think they're overly dressed, underly dressed, mm -hmm. they do this, they do that. Like, no, appreciate us all and appreciate us for being different. And I want the, the, the world at large to know that, you know, we're not monolith, right. you know, and, you know, there are so many different sides of us. 
Um, so that's those are the things I want people to take from it. Definitely. And for me personally, I love Crown and I love uh, Take It Slow. Those uh, talk to me personally. Thank you. What's sort of your favorite songs that you've done so far? You got like a oh, like thousand out. <laughs> like it was tough to go through. I was like. I had to pick something at some point. What are my favorite songs? But what for you are your favorite songs? In my catalog? Yeah. Uh, you can do it with your group or so. Yeah, it's uh, The Man is One. Um, just what it means uh, to men. Um, the connection, the stories that I talk to men about, how it makes them feel. Jesus Coming is one. Uh, Extra Extra is one with Mac Miller. Just because what it meant to my career, what he meant to my career, what he right. meant to us. To me, um, Complexion is one. Uh, that ain't my song. I'm featured on it, so I'm going to put it in there. <laughs> it's just a pivotal uh, point in my career. Uh, young gift, yeah, Gifted Young and Black with uh, Big Daddy Kane is one because that's the very first feature I had. Mm. And to have it with the legend, Big Daddy right. Kane, and you know, just the memory of what he told me after we recorded that song, it lit a fire in me. Um, uh, let me think. Uh, Man, it's, it's so, it's a, it's a you do, that's several. Wow, so much, man. Man, ah, uh, kind of, kind of love is one. Yeah. Just for my connection with South Africa right. and what that means. Um, man, there's someone she got game. I don't know. It's just, it's just several. Like, what do you think of from Crown or from Crown? I got one more too because I'm gonna tell you why I like it too. Or from okay, Crown. bust it. Through him, um, through him, I believe. Everybody it's, does through it's him. It's because I yeah. feel like it's a psychotic part of me. Yep. Like I felt like I felt it on the way driving. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna bust out this one. Even that's though you right. didn't say that, but and that's what like, I'm saying. That's another side that we be <laughs> feeling the women like, yo, like when you try to test us, like. Yeah. <laughs> I would do something what, like that. It was a very it's, one thing I like about your writing, by the way, mm -hmm. is that you literally paint a picture because I be coming up with music videos in my head. Mm -hmm. So once I like hear your songs, I'm like, yeah, you can do this. You can <laughs> dope, dope. I'll be coming up with mad music videos in my head on the way over. I was like, next time we got to do this, though. You know, but Bye. that's what I love about your music, honestly. It Thank definitely you. gives me a good story and a good visual. Thank you. And before we go, um, I know you're a very humble person, but I got to tell you this. I'm pretty sure you hear this often. One, you're a legend, because I hear you talking like the legend this, legend that. You're a legend in your own right. And oh, you're working so with so many legends. How was it to be a part of J. Cole's first Dreamville Fest? Oh, man, that was a moment, like, yeah. you know, to do that at home in North Carolina, for that to be the first one, um, just the Carolina connection that Cole has, to be able to support him right. on the journey and even doing that, um, I was happy to even just support my brother. Right. Uh, it, was, it was just really a moment, like, there's nothing like going home and it's a hometown festival and you can look out and see some of your friends or you know, see people that know where cookout is, know about Bojangles, know about going to church in the South, know about Duke and Carolina rivalry, what that really, <laughs> really means. Yeah. Like, outside of North Carolina, people don't understand unless you're from there, right. what that means. Like, it's just a different energy in the air. And, you know, it was historic that night. And you, if you, especially if you're from North Carolina, you can feel it, like, you know, what that festival meant. So, you know. Yeah, that's it's, it. It just felt really good. It was fulfilling. Right, perfect. Mm -hmm. And this is my favorite part of the show. It's called Five Fast Facts. <laughs> I like uh, these things. But so you far. gotta go fast though, because everybody okay, that come then. on, they be going slowly. Like, uh, uh, all know? right, <laughs> I'm gonna try to stick to the rules. Yeah, right, anything you it. want your fans to know that's not too personal that you feel comfortable with sharing. Oh, I just reel off five fast facts. Five fast facts. You gonna facts. put a timer on? Um, that's what a you mental ought, timer, though. That's mental what you timer. ought to start doing. You like, you got twenty seconds. I need five of them things. If you really want to go, um, okay, bet. I've never ever been on a roller coaster. Um, I do not like bacon. Um, uh, let me think. Uh, I'm scared of dogs, big, small, in between. I got chased way too much as a child. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm, I grew up a Jehovah's Witness. I mean, if you listen to yeah. the music, you'll know that. Um, and uh, I have, I've, let me see, I've never seen The Matrix. Oh, boom. So we got a lot of the same fast facts. Thank you so <laughs> much, Rhapsody, for coming in and letting us uh, talk to you about Eve. We really do appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, 
you enjoy this one? Let's get a number one, though. Let's put that in existence. Let's get a number one album. Okay, we're going to get a number one album. Number one album in the country. And a Grammy. And that's what I was saying. I'm dead serious. <laughs> and a BET award, and a Soul Train award, and an NAACP award. Come on. Because we can't forget our own. Like, Who else? I'm we'll speaking all, all of that. Uh, I, like I want to follow Pulitzer Surprise Kenny, and I want to pull the surprise rap. I want a Come Nobel on. Peace Prize. Come on. Um, I don't want to go to the moon, but you can send me. <laughs> you can take my album up there and listen to it, and I want video of an astronaut doing that. I want uh, Pop Tarts to make my own flavor of Pop Tarts. Um, I, <laughs> I want Nike to give me my own shoe Come on, or Steven. any shoe company. Uh, let me stop. <laughs> Adidas, we're gonna have Yeezy rocking the merch. I want to be the service. first artist to have shoes at every uh company. Adidas, Reebok, Nike, Come on. named after different women. Exactly. <laughs> so we can spread it out. <laughs> you so You're welcome. <laughs> Boy, boy, you sharp, boy. Look at the phase on you, boy. 